vapour where stunning pictures of the rehearsal for the royal wedding have emerged. Central London was awash with soldiers, sailors and carriages ahead of the wedding of the century in just two days' time now. And with that in mind, her agent is rumoured to have messaged the palace to see if they need anyone to stand in for a corgi. It's Lisa Maxwell! <laughs> This woman's been married so many times, she could probably have a go at heading up the proceedings herself. It's Janet Street Porter! <laughs> oh, if William and Kate had met on Blind Date, she'd certainly have been the guest of honour. She's back! It's our Silla Black! <laughs> and clearly my invite is still in the post. Yeah, whatever. It's me, <laughs> Kate Bonte. <laughs> We've got a man who proves that all good things come in small packages. It's the multi-talented X Factor finalist dancing on ice champ and West End superstar Ray Quinn. And she is... Oh, yes, ladies. <laughs> and she is one of the best-loved actresses in the country and a queen of British comedy to boot. Now starring in the sitcom The Life of Riley, it's Caroline Quentin. <laughs> Now, in case you live under a stone, you might have noticed that in two, day two days' time, the event of the century is taking place. 1,900 people have uh, now been invited to Friday's ceremony at the Westminster Abbey. From dignitaries to politicians to musicians, it's fair to say that the wedding guest... Le guest? <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting into the swing of the celebrations. Yes. You can see. The wedding guest list is a very long one. But while this will be a big wedding, there are, in fact, a number of very famous and high-profile people who have not been invited, including our last two Prime Ministers, Gordon Brown and Tony Blair. Oh. Writing in the Daily Mail today, columnist Stephen Glover says, it's an insult to democracy, especially as Sir John Major and Baroness Thatcher have both been invited. Now, apparently, this is purely down to protocol because both Major and Thatcher are Knights of the Garter and Blair and Brown are not. But, ladies, do you think that they should have been invited? And how do we react if we've been snubbed? Scylla? I really don't care. <laughs> no, I don't care. You know, I don't care whether the Blurs have been invited or not, or whether the, you know, Browns have been invited. Or... I care that I've not been invited. <laughs> That's what I care. But, uh, ooh... You know, it just may be, just may be. I mean, weddings are for people that you love. I know they're a, a different kind of couple, but maybe they don't like the blurs or the browns. <laughs> you know, that could be a good Silla, reason. it's not a question of like or not like. One day, William will be the king of this country, yes. and I think that it's pretty bloody shabby not to have invited the last two prime ministers. Well, let's have a little forensic look at this guest list. We've got the king of Swaziland. <laughs> Very relevant. A man who's got so many wives he probably can't remember, but certainly more wives than I've ever had husbands. Well, you've had a few husbands. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm not, you know, sitting in Westminster Abbey. I think it's pretty shabby, and Prince Charles has invited a Spanish tile manufacturer. <laughs> you can never have too many tiles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, on that basis, you know, why? I know the Middletons have invited someone from down the pub, the butcher and so on, but if, you know, Guy Ritchie can go to the wedding, I think it's pretty disgraceful, actually, that Gordon Brown and Tony Blair haven't gone. But I don't you think it's up to them? I agree, Silla. Oh, I up think to it's you. Up to it's not <laughs> up to <laughs> me, Silla. Actually, but it's I... Uh, this wedding is going to be on television all around the world and should yeah. sum up something about our democracy. So do we value Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie and a bloke from down a pub more than two world leaders? Well, actually, do you know what? On the point of, of Blair, most, most uh, definitely, do you not think that um, he played a key role in what has to have been the, the darkest uh, of, of times for William and Harry when their mother died? I oh. mean, he really really did step up to the occasion when the palace, it, you know, were being very heavily criticised for the way that they handled their own grief. OK, and, that was and... the honeymoon period. <laughs> what we're all forgetting about is that we're going to a Iraqi war. We're in this Iraqi war. Who also led them into the I Iraqi you, war? You're a Prime Minister, Silla, Silla, you have to make unpopular decisions, but in this instance, but do it's... you not think that he was a key advisor and a key player at a time when those boys really needed steering and therefore 
Do you think the public Do you know expected what? I him think, to be there? I think this royal wedding is about us celebrating what's good about this country, and I think yeah. everyone <laughs> wants to have yeah. a really lovely day. And I think, you know, whether it's deliberate or not, part of me thinks that having Tony Blair there and Gordon Brown just reminds us of some of the messes that this country has got into. I think it's a day to focus on the positive stuff. And more importantly, it's their wedding. They should have who they want. It's a truly honest wedding. I think we haven't seen... Oh, it's not honest at it all. It is it's honest. It's a state occasion. Oh. No, it's oh, not. It's fine. ticking Can't all night. The... Let, anyway, just, let's no, just, just talk. Just Please, let I'm... me finish. What I was going to say is, it is a, an honest wedding in that William and Kate have invited who they want. It won't be the first they wedding... They have invited well, who no. they want. Every mum and You can see that kind of Prince Charles all over this Yes, place. but have but you let's... never been to a wedding where your parents have invited really weird people oh. that you don't... I know, but let's talk, let's talk on the wider issue about what it feels like to be snubbed, because if I was Tony and Cherie Blair not getting an invite, I would be pretty, really, well, really, like really I annoyed. Well, I feel like I have been snubbed. Janet, in all honesty. <laughs> I know you've been stuck because I, you haven't been invited. I've got, well, honestly, you're all laughing. I really thought I was going to go. Oh. <laughs> well, just because you've met him a few times. I do. I actually know him because I, I'm an ambassador for Centrepoint and he's the patron of our charity and I've done, you know, I've met him on the odd occasion. I got down and dirty with him and slept rough. I know, but if you'd served... If you you was the one you got invited. <laughs> Lisa, but if you'd well, served it, her mum, if you'd pulled a few pints down at the local pub, you would have been invited. But I know, I, do you really? know what? Yeah. Inviting the local butcher and the postman, that's what you expect. These are people that have watched her grow up and have been part of her life and absolutely they should be there. But to claim it's an honest wedding when you've got the King of Swaziland and his 19 wives going. I mean, does Kate Middleton even know the King of Swaziland? Well, do you know what? That guest list kind of politic thing is so difficult. There's a reason why I'm not married. We had <laughs> three conversations about the Blooming guest list and every single one of them ended in a ruck. So, it, you can never please everybody. So, I mean, we can't... We'd be here all day if we talk about who Janet invited to her many weddings. Silla. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what, well, either my fourth wedding, I was getting divorced, but I thought... Oh, I'd, but when I got married the fourth time, I thought, well, you know, it's not going to work. I'm going to get divorced, but I'll have the wedding party anyway. <laughs> I rang up my mother. She said, uh, on the day, she rang me back. She said, sorry, Janet, I'm not coming. I've got food poisoning. <laughs> I knew it. Just an over excuse. It. Yeah. Over but it. Too Phil, many what, wedding cakes. <laughs> what about your wedding day to Bobby? Um, how much of a hand did, did your parents play in the guest list? Uh, well, I got married... I was married twice to the same guy. Oh. Yeah, I was. Because I was in the middle of doing the Silas TV series at the time. And we wanted to get married, desperately. And uh, a friend of ours, Peter Brown, put the bands up with Bobby at Marylebone. I was married the first time at Marylebone High Street. My mother and Bobby's family went mental, cos they all love a do, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And they were done out of a do. Nobody came to my first wedding, really, just a handful of people. And so we had to do it all again six weeks later. I mean, Mother ran the whole show. In fact, she insisted, cos I'm Catholic, that I had an... In I wa she wanted me to marry a Paddy's wigwam, we called that the Catholic Cathedral in Liverpool. And, uh, yeah, we did. And I had to have an hour's interview with the Monsignor to tell me, and this is quite sad, actually, at the end, but I agreed with him. He said, no, you can't get married here because you're a very bad example to other girls. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Because you've been married well, to I've, I've In it the must... eyes of the church, I've been living in sin for six weeks. <laughs> it must be a red-headed thing. There's a certain other red-headed lady who apparently is a bit naughty and she's not got an invitation, so there you go. Oh, that's our Fergie. Yeah. yeah. OK, now we are extending a big invitation to you to take part in today's chats. If you want...